Okay, so the next speaker is Richard Roberts. So, as the title sort of suggests, it's fairly self-explanatory. So this research here, well, say research, this is more of sort of a um, the product of um, going through and completing a just finished my PhD, and this is um, yeah sort of the product of going through and producing you know a, a soft visualization package, and then moving on to the next one, and then moving on to the next one, and realizing there are lots of things you can sort of generalize into a library um, it's just to save time in future software projects. So this is a um, a, a color map um, management library called it Spectrum, um, um, <coughs> so I feel it's a, a, a snappy name, but it actually began, I think it was 2015, um, I was um, rewriting a, a very bad piece of co um, code that I wrote, a software, um, piece of software that I wrote, um, and it was, I think Bob had asked me to implement um, a proper color management system into it, because uh, uh, up until that point I had just been, I'd been doing a very sort of rudimentary, bad, bad methods of um, of uh, mapping color to my software, so I designed this sort of system that would, you know, that calculate the right colors, and um, and it worked quite well. And when I came to the next piece of software, I figured, well, why, why should I, why should I, um, you know, do all that again? Why don't I just copy and paste, and I'll, I'll modify a few things, and maybe make it a little bit more generalizable. Um, and ended up turning into this sort of library. I've turned it into a, a header-only library that you can just in C++ just load in the header, and it's nice and easy to use. And even that there are students in this room that use the library now. So the point of it is, it's I've uploaded it to Git. Um, and it's you know open source. Anyone can modify it, use it, use it how you like. Um, and it's just aimed at uh, reducing the effort that you'd be putting when um, mapping color. If that's if you're using um, C++. So a lot of the research we do here, C++, Qt, OpenGL. Um, but yeah, that's sort of research. So um, related work. So there is definitely more to this slide than that. <laughs> that's really funny, but it's <laughs> amusing that I've found that later. Okay, so related work, this is how to remember. So, um, anyone who works in visualization has probably used Color Brew. It's a, a very good website that, um, uh, that is, essentially has a lot of color maps. You can download the colors and you can use them in your software. Um, but the aim of this, this software is it's, it's less um, of, you know, here are some nice color maps. It's here's the implementation of the color map. Here's how you extract the right color from um, the, you know, the range of color maps. Um, there are a few other things, I mean, there are a few other websites that um, let you get some nice color maps so you can download them. Um, but in terms of implementation, um, there, there are possible ones too. I think Java has, a, has one, um, and Python has a nice implementation of these things, but for C++ there didn't seem to be anything. Um, let's go past that slide. Um, so, in order to sort of work out how the uh, library works and to make it sort of universal to all data types and all projects, yeah, to look into the theory of, of color types. And there are different types of color maps. There are diverging color maps, um, which, as you can see, they sort of diverge between two colors with a lighter color in the middle. Um, there are sequential color maps, which is sort of one color and they're just the, the, the color changes from light to dark. And then there are qualitative, where the, each, the, each, in color maps, each one of these is in as a class. So um, in qualitative color maps, the, the classes have no relation to each other. In fact, it, it helps if they're, if they're different, but what, more different from each other. So, um, so this is sort of the type of color maps, and at the bottom here, which you probably can't see, um, there are interpolated and non-interpolated. So um, it, it's fairly self-explanatory. You have this smooth transition interpolated, and then non-interpolated is just the class colors change. Sort of, um, yeah, they have fixed changes along the, um, the scale. Um, and then there are four different data types to go along with these. Um, I'm sure you guys, most of you guys, all what well, you guys know this anyway, but it's, it's an important thing to cover. Um, there's nominal data, which is discrete groups, which is always going to be used for qualitative, um, qualitative color maps. Um, ordinal data can be sorted, but they don't necessarily have a specific distance. So, um, yeah, the, the, the A to D um, uh, 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 grading system. Um, there's interval data, which has a, a meaningful distance between the values, but um, where zero isn't meaningful. So the example of this is um, in uh, degrees Celsius. 
had an argument with my cousin a few years back, and he was saying, oh, it's twice as hot as it was yesterday because it was 20 degrees rather than 10 degrees. Yeah. Well, that's not actually how it works because 20 degrees <coughs> isn't twice as hot. It's just that zero is a somewhat arbitrary um, measure um, of, of degrees. So the difference there is ratio data um, is where zero is meaningful. So zero Kelvin is, you know, if you, if you use Kelvin, you know, 10 degrees Kelvin is, is uh, half as hot as 20 degrees Kelvin, theoretically. So um, it essentially means that you can take a ratio of, the, of those numbers and, um, and yeah, and, uh, actually have a meaningful value taken from it. So we've built this library to accommodate all these different data types, where you can use sort of um, you know you can get not interpolated, non interpolated <coughs> values from it, um, and there are a bunch of sort of different, different uh, methods in the library you can use to sort of extract the right values. Um, so an overview of the library. Um, it's, it's one single header file, but you can load in, um, you load it in, it's got four different classes in there. There's a color class built in. Um, there's the, the color map, which is um, a, essentially a list of colors together, and there's a bunch of functions in there that will, um, that will help you with that. Um, there's a color map list, so um, built into the color map, or built into the library, we have um, a, a, we baked in a number of different color maps. It's very easy to add new ones in. Um, but this list sort of stores all the, the stored color maps. You can swap between them nice and quite easily. And then the color manager, and this is the, this is the main class that you can you interact with um, when you're using the library. And then we have uh, the one you know is a color map classification. That's um, those in the different type of color maps. That's the diverging, sequential, qualitative um, there. So how do you use it? So it's nice and easy to use. Um, the aim of it is that we've We've tried to make it um, as easy as possible to use. We demonstrated at the end of this, actually, there's a video. It can be you know, uh, included in the project. The code can be written out, and it can be used in under two minutes. Um, so the first thing, you, you, you know, include it in your main file. You initialize it in the main method. Um, you can select the color map. So in the color map list, this, this line here, in the color map list, you get the first um, uh, diverging, um, diverging color map from the list. Um, you set it to the current color map, and then, um, oh yeah, you, you, you uh, set it yeah, so it sets it to the color map, or you can set it through the index, there's two different ways of setting it there. Um, and then the library is used very easily, essentially a color manager, you give it an upper and lower range, so 0 to 100, imagine you were grading tests and it was, you know, a percentage. Um, you input in this um, get interpolated color values, that returns a value on that um, uh, interpolated scale rather than just the class color. So 27, you know, between 0 and 100, and it will return the color of the, the current color map. Um, so it's nice and simple, in literally just these lines of codes, you've, you've managed to get the right color from the, the, the color map. And there are lots of different ways to get this, um, get the color value. So we should, I should then get interpolated color, which returns sort of an individual point here. Um, if it's the class color, It'll um, sort of say, you know, if it's 27, that color there and that color there is slightly different, so it'll return the whole class color rather than the interpolated value. Um, and then there's a get color from seed value, which essentially just returns a random color. So if you wanted to make your own um, color map or just randomly use a color, you could use the same seed value, and it'll always return the same color. Um, get color from index, so this returns the color based on um, the index in the color map. So say there were 20 colors in your color map and you, you want the third one, you could do that. Um, <clears throat> and then get color from name. So the color actually has a, um, a, a name value associated with it in the class. So you can say, I want to get the red color, um, if that's helpful to you. <clears throat> and then when you use the, the color, it's very easy to get. So say um, color was stored in as a C, um, yeah, get in R, um, and that's the RGB. And gets that from RGB values. So the int is the, if you get that, you can also get the float values as well, where you just get R, get GB. Um, and you can also get the hex color value as well, that's something we have. Um, and then it can be a simple of using um, GL. You, know, you can set the color like that. So it's a relatively small amount of code to use this library. Um, and uh, yeah, so you, this, this video now demonstrates the hopefully this we know what we'll do. Is it going to load? <laughs> Unable to play video. Marvelous. <coughs> One more time. Right. Should we see if we can find it on? Um... You have it on YouTube. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I have it there. 
Find it on YouTube, because that's really the best way. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so, Okay, so the example here, we've got this, um, yeah, I've just created a pseudo bar chart. It's, it's supposed to be pseudo data, it's randomly generated, but imagine it a student test score of 0 to 100%, and these are students along the side, you press a button to sort the list. It's a bit visually dull, so if you want to add colour in, this is what we need to do. So, the very first thing we do, we're going to start the timer. There we go. Um, so we just include the colour manager head file, first off. You go into the main method, as I showed earlier, you include... Um, Include the library in the main. We initialize, um, yeah, run the initializer in the color manager. Go into our color manager. This, this is the, the, the class that we're um, doing all the drawing in, so we import it, include it again. Um, so this is where we select the color map. So we're getting the first sequential color map in the list. So. Um, <coughs> You can tell I'm not rushing, I'm not worried about the two minute time. <clears throat> there we go, so that's the first one, and then we set that to be the current <laughs> colour map. Now we're um, instantiating the color manager, so we create a, a manager. We're going to set it from zero to one hundred because it's percent, and then we get the right color. So the, the color is saved in uh, bar bar dot. Let's have a look. Let's see what we saved it in there. Bar dot. Oh, to bar dot value. That's easy enough. So that's going to be the return the um, the test score. And then we're just setting the color value, call dot R, call dot B, or G, G, B. Nice and simple. We can do it. One minute fifty seven. There we go. So if you run that now, <laughs> one, one take as well. That was like, that was like, That's good. Yeah. <laughs> Liar. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> so there we go. So it's added, it's added color to the. Um, it's added color to this now, and it's um, and there are, it's very easy to sort of change the color map if that's what you want to do. It's a simple case of just changing, um, well, essentially just one integer really. Um, so it's nice and easy to use. Um, it's open source. It's on GitHub. What's going on here? Let's close that back. Yeah. So it's on GitHub. It's something that I, I um, if you're interested, feel free to you know. Um, um, yeah, feel free to um, sort of use it, download it, test it out. Um, yeah, there's the link. Um, yeah, and we, we're going to plan to continue developing this. This is something that um, I think that if other students are using it, I keep getting uh, Liam is very. Um, he, he'd like to send them me saying, "Oh, there's a there's a there's a something something wrong here. I fixed it, and we we've, we've updated it." So it's, it is constantly being updated and constantly being used. If you go there, you can download that sort of test file, the the, the test school thing. Um, and you can run that, um, so just you can get used to how it works. But it's it's very simple to use. So if that's something you guys are interested in, feel free to join and collaborate and, and use it. Um, yeah. If you guys have any questions, thanks for listening. Okay. Any questions? Yeah. Uh, I think that's a very interesting job and very useful. Uh, and you thought about. Uh, having an interface using Swift so that it's portable to the languages. Oh, I doubt that's not something we've considered at this point. Um, yeah, it could be interesting. I think I like what I like about the fact that you know it's open source. It's, if 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 it gets to the point where lots of people use it and they request people are requesting these things, then um, that, yeah, it could be quite useful. Um, yeah, I think um, we've got a, a fair amount of sort of future work directions we want to work on. So Naya, he's he's Naya's, um 
he's done some some cool things with this library and added some new features in. Um, that I think that we want to add in eventually to the main library. Um, yeah, I think essentially that's that sort of thing. I think we will add in if there's if people sort of request it. I think because it's it's a that's obviously quite a, must be quite a big project to to modify it, but it'd be good. I've heard a swing. It's just looking no. at <laughs> yeah. no, if 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 Liam were gonna do like the next version, what would you recommend? <laughs> <laughs> what what what's the what would be the most useful like extensions or enhancements or? Well, oh, I think Liam's probably the best person. Not to <laughs> um, what were the features you were looking to adding in? What were some things you wanted to add in? Class, um, you could, if you can wait classes to be um, different sizes. So as it stands, if you want to have blue, 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 and then red, you have to add in the color blue a number of times, but you could add in a system where you could weight colors um, for data sets that are distributed. So I don't know what to use. Cynthia Brewer's maps are really quite well referenced, mm. so they're in it. It's how do you actually, if I'm using your system, mm. and I want to say I've used this color map. <laughs> yes. Uh, is there a, a like, it's like having a, a data DOI tag for each colour map, which I then can reference. It's not, it, not just a GitHub reference, which I could do. It's yeah. how can I reference to GitHub plus this is the set of colour maps I've been choosing for this thing when I evaluated it with people. Uh, that sort of thing. So it's, it's how to have a list. Yeah. yeah. So what currently, what will, uh, how the way it currently works is that it's actually really easy to add new colour maps in. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be nice to. Um, yeah, so can you that? Yeah, so it's a, a, currently it's a case to I get a unique number out from it. Yeah. So if you add your own colour map, you will get a unique number, and then that's there in the registry. That would be really useful. That would be a cool feature, actually. So currently it's a case of if you know, if I go on colour and I find the colour map I want, it's a case of <laughs> copying and pasting these values, putting it into a, a, a block of text, and it just loads it in automatically. So um, it's. I'm saying how to make it citable. Yeah, yeah, to make it. Yeah, that, that would be a really useful feature, actually. I like this, currently going. Yeah, good ideas. <laughs> um, any other questions? Just make a note in that one. <laughs> My homework. Do you think you could like bring this to your new job and, and bring it like I introduce think, it to yeah, them? Yeah, because my new job it'll, it's going to be C plus plus. So I'm going to do some graphics work, so I may well do. Be interesting. Okay. Thanks very much. Then.